Hello, 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 hello. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. 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 Would you do the unthinkable and acknowledge yourself for showing up? I know sometimes people to ourselves can be a challenge. Sometimes it's hard. It's nothing harder to do than to give someone a compliment. Have you noticed that? Have you ever tried to give someone a compliment and they were just every way they could trying to deflect it? Oh, it's not me. Oh, it's not me. Oh, uh, no, no, no. You, you know, you just, I guess say yes. And then uh, what is it that most people are unhappy about? They think they're not getting enough appreciation. And yet when you appreciate it, they oh, no, 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 don't say that, don't say that, don't say that. Then people don't say it. I'm mad. Why don't people say it? No, don't say that, don't say that. No, don't say it. So the Course in Miracles is talking about how we have uh, love and fear and conflicting experiences in our experience because we have two sets of thinking. You know, I love myself, I don't love myself. I want freedom, and then I don't want freedom. I want peace, and then I don't want peace. So really, the ups and downs are coming from the Course defines as two different ways of thinking and just going back and forth between the two. So that explains duality. Everybody's like, where does the duality come from? It's coming from my own mind. I'm the one that's thinking in a loving way one minute and a fearful way the next. So my life reflects love sometimes and fear the next. Another radical concept in the Course in Miracles is that it says that we don't have but, we, got some, we, got, we don't have but two feelings, love and fear. So anxiety would be a form of fear. Yeah. Anger would be a form of yeah. guilt, a form yeah. of yeah. lack, a yeah. form of sickness, yeah. form of fear, happiness. Love. love. Yeah, love, like joy, a form of love. love. Abundance, a form love. of, we got seats in the front row, um, which I would love to be able to look at your smile on the face. <laughs> that would be great. Thank you. Um, so, when you start to break it down to love and fear, you'll be surprised that when you just say, instead of saying I'm angry, saying I'm afraid, it'll give you a different context. Next time you say it, I'm feeling guilty, just say I feel afraid, it'll give you a different context. And none of us want to feel afraid. So immediately the mind will try to correct it because that's already something you program the mind not to want to feel. We've already programmed, programmed ourselves that it'd be cool if we didn't feel what? Fear. So as soon as you say, my jealousy is fear, my anger is fear, my insecurity is fear, then that would trigger your mind to automatically do what would be necessary to let that go. Everybody with me on that? I'll yeah. say it again. Take a breath, take a breath with me, okay? I'll say it again. It would be a lot faster to work with the way your mind already has, is operating than to try to change it completely. Don't that, doesn't that sound right? Yes, yeah. okay. So, whenever you're afraid, haven't you pretty much all your life been wanting to not feel afraid. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. So you've been constantly programming yourself to let go of fear. So if you just call whatever it is that's causing you conflict a form of fear, your mind will automatically try to do whatever is necessary to let that fear go. Mm. So the Course in Miracles is really cool because it teaches you how to work with the way your mind is already programmed to get you all out of all the stuff that's causing you any form of conflict. And so it's faster. Okay, for instance, how many of you have been taught that being arrogant isn't cool? Oh, yeah. All right, yeah. so you've already got that program and your mind doesn't want to feel arrogant. arrogant. Okay, the Course in Miracles says that it's arrogant to believe that your perception of yourself is truer than God's. In other words, the Course is saying, the Spirit is saying that we are unlimited beings, we are loving beings, we are grand beings, we are unbelievably free beings, intelligent beings, giving beings, powerful beings. That's what, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm glad that that's, that's, that's the thought that brings joy to somebody. That's okay. All right, that's okay. You are a limited being, you're a powerful being, you're a loving being, okay? That's how the Course says our Creator sees us, okay? Now, so if I say I'm no good, I'm weak, I'm pitiful, I'm not enough, then that's my evaluation of myself. So the Course is saying, that's arrogant to think your evaluation of yourself is truer than God's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And I went, whoa, that's deep. <laughs> so you're being arrogant every time you put yourself down. You're saying who you think you are is truer than what your creator says you are, which is a loving, powerful being. So your mind is what? I already learned not to want to be arrogant. <laughs> so as soon as you say it's arrogant not to love myself, your mind unconsciously goes, uh-oh, -uh, wait a minute, that's something I want to change. Right? We, we got to let that go, because that's arrogant. I don't want to be arrogant. So the course does a, a nice mind shift on you. That's what I like about it. It says it's the reversal of everything. So also, if you want to make the Course in Miracles easy, then, then use the Course in Miracles instructions for how to study it. And the Course in Miracles instructions for how to study it is for you to remember you don't have to believe it. Its instructions are you don't have to welcome it, accept it. It says you're going to find some of it hard to believe. You're going to find some of it quite startling. Sorry. But if you just, and also it says don't analyze it, which it calls <laughs> judging it. Which is the main error that Course in Miracles, New Course in Miracles students do. They analyze it. And uh, it says, you're not asked to judge it. Nobody's asking us to judge it. It says if you will use it, it'll show you that it's true. I like that. It's like, to me, it's sort of like the spirit is just giving us a dare. Say, hey, look, if you use it, I'll show you it's true. If you use it, it'll show you it's true. Just use it. You want to see, you analyze it, whether or not it will work. Why don't you just do it? Wouldn't that be the best way to see if it would work? <laughs> Since you're trying to figure out. But see, I'm so afraid of making a mistake that I think I have to figure it all out beforehand to make sure that it turns out exactly the way I want it to, or I won't even attempt it. Anybody familiar with that one? <laughs> okay, uh, please. Making a mistake is no big deal. You know, it's like the person who won't allow themselves to go out on a date and they like to have a relationship because they're trying to make so sure it's the right person to the point that they never go out at all. <laughs> so they never have a date because they're afraid they might go out on a date and it might not turn out right. So they don't do no dates at all. <laughs> what about the person that went out on Monday and went, okay, that didn't work out. They go out on Tuesday, so well, that didn't work out. Go out on Wednesday and said, that didn't work out. Go out on Thursday go, hey, that was really cool. Yeah. Okay. Then they, and within four days, they've had them someone that they've connected up with that they're enjoying, where the person who's waiting for the per perfect person, by the way, the perfect person has to show up at their door, knock on the door, come inside. <laughs> <laughs> because they're not going out nowhere, <laughs> they're not meeting anybody. So they, 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 they wait patiently for the perfect person at home, not extended <laughs> to anybody. But they're supposed to show up. Is that right, buddy? Right, you got it. All right. <laughs> you know, and if you really believe that they would, It'd be like to be the coolest delivery from a UPS man you ever had. <laughs> you know, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be, but still you might want to do something that shows that you're willing to have that happen by extending, you know. Um, so, it, so the course said you use the idea to show you that it's true. So we've been talking about the characteristics of a person that loves. The characteristics of a person that the teacher of God, the Course says, is a demonstrator of love. I love to take the definitions that the Course in Miracles gives of its words and substitute those defini definitions for the words in the book. It's, a, it's so powerful. Like, let me give you an example. A teacher of God. Okay, the Course says a teacher is a demonstrator. And then it says God is another name for love. The love that created us. So a, so a teacher of God would really be a demonstrator of love. Doesn't it have a little bit more power? Yeah. A demonstrator of love, that's a teacher. A teacher is a demonstrator. A teacher is a demonstrator. A teacher is a demonstrator, which is kind of different from a teacher just being an instructor. So the person that's teaching you is the person that's demonstrating. And guess what? Are we all demonstrating something? Mm -hmm. So we're all teaching something, are we? And we're teaching two things. We're teaching how a sane person behaves, or we're teaching how a crazy person behaves. <laughs> Those are only two lessons that's coming down in the world. And some days, you're either one of them, mm -hmm. and so am I. Some days I get up and I go, I'm going to show the world exactly how an insane person <laughs> operates. <laughs> and I get up that day and I do everything the opposite of what to bring me peace. <laughs> Anybody got that? Yeah. Yeah. So then that day I became a teacher of what not to do if you want to be happy. Like all your broke friends, 
they're teaching you what to do to not have wealth. Money. Abundance. Money. You know, the ones that have no relationships and they're upset about it, and there are some people that don't have relationships and they're happy as they can be. So I'm not saying everybody needs to have another body with them in order to be happy, but I'm talking about the ones who complain. <laughs> okay. They're dem watch them closely and they'll teach you exactly what to do to not have relationships. And that's, isn't that beautiful? You don't even have to go through the experience. They're just showing you what not to do. All the time. Watch them closely when you socialize with them and do just the opposite of everything you see them do. And you'll probably have a really cool mate within a week or two. <laughs> but they're showing you what not to do. First of all, they're probably blaming and not taking responsibility for what's happened in the previous relationships. They probably think there's some kind of a scarcity of love. There's not enough to go around. They're probably attacking and using guilt and anger to manipulate other people. In other words, I'm going to get you to do what I want you to do by how much anger I show you about what you're doing right now, and then you're going to change. Anybody familiar with that one? OK, the course says that's a very special relationship. That's what the course calls special relationships. Because a special relationship, a relationship that the love that the two people are exchanging with each other is different from the love of God. It's different from the kind of love that an unlimited love gives. Now remember, you don't have to believe me, because if you think I'm saying something that you have to believe, you probably feel a lot of resistance to what I say today, because I'm not asking you to believe it. I'm just sharing what the Course in Miracles says. Is that everybody clear about that? So it's not nothing to debate about. You know, you don't have to believe it. You know, all right. So, so when people hear special relationship, they think the Course is anti-special relationship because they don't know what the Course in Miracles definition of special is. And it's special because it's not the way it should be. Love should be peaceful and loving and harmonious for everyone. So special is when it's not that way. See, that's, see, that's the opposite again. We think of special as just the opposite. It's special because, oh, that's the way it's the best thing it could be is special. And the course is saying, well, actually, special means you can have it every now and then. It's a special occasion. It's a special event. That means every now and then. So you don't want special love. You want love that's holy, which yes. of course calls constant and consistent. Yes. You, I, I don't want it on just on Christmas. <laughs> I, I always wonder how those people who only get fed on Thanksgiving make it the rest of the year until next Thanksgiving. Because they get fed on special occasions, as if that's the only time they need to eat is on Thanksgiving. So I've always wondered how they handle it the rest of the, you know. So it should be ordinary to eat. It should be ordinary to have loving people in your life that support you and recognize you. It should be ordinary for you to feel really fulfilled in your career and what you, you should be ordinary to feel your connection with God and love and source. It should be ordinary yeah. for you to look at yourself with love. That should be ordinary. That shouldn't be special. <coughs> but it's okay to call it special if you want to. So if you want to, so if you want to do the special thing, the Course in Miracles says, then what you do is you say, everybody is special. It's like if you want to play the special game, you go, everybody is special. Mm -hmm. So if everybody is special, then nobody's special, but everybody's special. <laughs> now, we, it also says the reason why we are sitting here in bodies that seem to be different shapes, sizes, and colors is because at, at, we are infinitely, imagine you are a child. And as a child, you can imagine anything that you like to imagine and then pretend you are experiencing what you've imagined. Anybody familiar with that process? Mm -hmm. And suppose you imagine it so vividly that now you think what you are imagining is real and you no longer know who you are. Now in other words, I'm imagining that I'm Mighty Mouse, right? And I've gotten so into it that now I think I am Mighty Mouse, but I'm really not. So that's what this is basically has happened here is that we wanted to see what it would be like to experience ourselves at, the one wanted to see what it would be like to experience itself as many. The one wanted to see what it was like to experience itself as many. And so that's another way of saying, we wanted to know what it would be like to think we were separate. So the only way you can pull it off and really pull it off right is to actually forget that you are actually one with everything and everybody, and everything and everybody is just another aspect of you. So in order, so in order to pull out the separation in different game, you got to forget that you are joined and the same. Okay, you got to forget if you want to play the separation in different game, you have to forget that you are not separate and that you're not different to play the game. So now we are experiencing the result of uh, people really believing they're separate and different and not joined. 
And the result of thinking that we're separate and different is the world we see. Yeah. The world you're looking at, the world you're reading about, the world, I, I, I said this to the class of the day, I mentioned it again, I was, I was at the movie, <clears throat> Thursday I went to the movie to see uh, I Am, which is a cool movie to check out, and in the audience we were sitting there when we got up at the end of the movie, this, we were getting ready to move into the aisle, me and my friend I went to, with, we, all of us were moving to the aisle, and this lady said, boy that was so awesome, would you give me a hug? So and so and before within five minutes, everybody in the audience was hugging each other <laughs> in a regular movie <laughs> on the way out. Everybody said, No, could you give me a hug? And so I'm like going, see, that's the miracle. <laughs> that is what the course in miracles means when it says a course in miracles. It's not a miracle that we can go to the moon. It's not a miracle that I got a smartphone that you can do everything on except hold a phone call. <laughs> that just blows my mind. I can, I can access my computer at home. I can get my boarding pass. I can look at TV. But I can't make a phone call. <laughs> Somehow or another, they forgot the point of the thing. <laughs> Have you ever felt that? <laughs> the call drops. Well, anyway, that's a whole other thing that I'm going to have to do the I remember a time if you had told me that something like that could happen, I would say it was impossible. Mm -hmm. That you could be in a public place and see love happen like that spontaneously. But it's happening so much to me since I started to study The Course in Miracles and do what it says, that I know I'm shifting from one world to another. And it's a change, and it, and it started to happen when I changed my perception and when I took responsibility more and more for what I was experiencing in my life and stopped blaming other people for what I'm going through and made a conscious decision to not attack people and to see them as one with me and connected with me, their interest is my interest. Then all of a sudden I started drawing other people to me who had that exact same attitude and there's no way you can be with a person that is loving and realize they're connected to you and that they're responsible for their experience and not have peace. More so than when you're with people who think they're separate from each other, blaming each other for what they're going through, seeing each other as just victims. And that's what happens when you just believe you're only different and separate from each other. Then it, then the idea of competition immediately comes up because there has, there has got to be somebody less than and, and greater than to have that kind of a difference going on. So judgment gets started and so, from, so that I can see that I'm unique, I've got to judge you in some kind of way in order to make me better or judge you as better in order to make me less. So the whole idea of separation and difference means I'm black, you're white, so we don't share the same interests. You're female, I'm male, so we don't have the same interests. See, the whole difference thing could have been fun as long as we recognize we weren't really different. As long as we recognize we all are the same. We all want happiness. We all want love. We all want to feel safe. We all want to feel connected. What, what the problem is, is each and every one of us come up with our own way of achieving that and then attack each other for the different methods all of us are using to get to the same goal. Wow. Wow. So therefore, the thing I like to do to be happy is different from the way you like, so you judge my way. You like to watch TV. <laughs> You couldn't be spiritual as me, because all spiritual people do not watch TV. <laughs> it's, it's in the rule book of being spiritual. <laughs> you know, so I pride myself. I haven't watched TV in five years. <laughs> I know that's why you don't know there's a bomb about to land. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> what I'm saying is it doesn't make any difference one way or another. You're in your ego when you judge the other person for doing it differently. That's if your way is better. I always tell people when they're giving me their ideas about what a real love looks like, and I, and I say to them, that's great, the way you've decided that you're going to do your love relationships, that's beautiful, but that's just a way. Just like the way I say that I want to do love in relationships is just a way. It doesn't mean your way is better than my way. You know, my way is just another way. Your way is just another way. Like people who see themselves as monogamous have a tendency to judge people who seem to be polyamorous. People who are polyamorous have a tendency to judge people who are monogamous. People who are in open relationships judge people who be in closed relationships. People in closed relationships judge people who be in open relationships. People in heterosexual relationships can judge people who seem to be in homosexual relationships. People in homosexual relationships can judge people who seem like they're in heterosexual relationships. And we won't even talk about the animal kingdom. Now, <laughs> like there'll be people who will come in this room who will have their idea of what they think a spiritual teacher ought to be like. Like some people could come in and say, he doesn't have on a suit and tie, so therefore I can't listen to anything he says. 
there'll be some people that walk in and say he has on a suit and tie. I, I, I can't listen to anything he says. And there are some people that say when they see the men in a suit and tie, say I can't listen to him because he's got a suit and tie. He needs to be in something more casual than I can listen to. Casual truth is the only kind I can hear. <laughs> okay. So again, we write back to the judgment, which comes from thinking that we're different and better than and less than. Another thing about being you different is that uh, in being what we see ourselves as being unique, which was should have been fun. The reason why the one divided itself up into many is so we couldn't have some happiness and joy and creativity. It's supposed to be fun. To me, it's like we are, we are like a person who goes on vacation in Hawaii, and they're going to build a month vacation, right? What do they do? They go down to the employment office and get a job. <laughs> That's us. This was supposed to have been an adventure in creation and extension in love. We forgot who we really are, bought into a system that said we had to do stuff that we really don't want to do in order to survive, forgot our connection to God, and our guidance and a divine plan for our life, and everyone in here has a divine plan for your life. Everyone in here has a special function. The Course of Miracles says we want it to be special. Cool. All right, that means you have a special function that only you can fulfill. You have your own unique way of allowing the truth of God and truth to come into the world. You are a very unique way that love will come into this world. You want it to be special, you are. Now, why are you suffering? Because you are not getting in touch with what that unique and special way is that's based on who you are, which means that nobody else's path is your path. 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 You, this is an individualized curriculum. So if you're suffering, it's because you're probably trying to live your life the way that something outside of you taught you you should. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And not living your life the way going inside and communing with the Holy Spirit your higher self, the love of God, the truth in you is telling you. So if you're suffering in any area, that is the area you are following your plan. So how can you tell the difference between your plan and the divine plan? Suffering. The suffering you're going through. <laughs> that is very easy to tell. Now, if you are addicted to your plan then, and you're not ready to give it up and you're suffering, the truth teaches that what you probably do is make suffering part of the plan. You'll say, what you're going through is just something you need to go through in order to grow. That's you believing in your plan to the point that you don't want to give it up, so even though you're suffering from it, you still keep doing it. Because you'd rather be right than be happy. There are a lot of people that rather be right than be happy. The Course of Miracles says, we get up, <laughs> I love it, says, we get up in the morning with the goal of being right even when we're wrong. So the average person gets up in the morning, I'm going to be right all day, even if I'm wrong. <laughs> Y'all know you, know, you know that's the part of us that does that. Oh, yeah. It just wants to be right. Oh, yeah. So the course said that's what actually happens. We get up in the morning with the desire to be right more than the desire to be happy. How do you know when you've decided to be happy more than you've decided to be right? Well, I'll tell you, it's easy to tell. You will hope you are wrong when you're miserable. Yeah. How do you know how you, how, how, I'll say it again, how can you tell when you're ready to have the solution more than the problem? It would be when you have the problem, you say you hope you're wrong. Mm -hmm. Because it, you don't want the way you set it up to be right if you're miserable. Mm -hmm. It's deep, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some people's desire to be right is so strong, like even right now. Well, there's no such thing as wrong. All directions are right. In the body, you don't have time enough to try all directions. So it really would be to your advantage in the body to go, all directions aren't right. It saves time. Okay. <laughs> if I want to go to over to, <laughs> if you want to come to this church, and you went in the opposite direction, <laughs> you could go, well, all directions are right. <laughs> and you would eventually get here, but the class would be over. Because <laughs> 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 you're going to go all the way around the world. Oh, yeah. You follow my point? Mm -hmm. It would have been rather, better to say, if I head this direction, which is east, is the correct direction to go to get to the church, to head to the west is wrong. This was my goal of getting to the church, even though, in the grand scheme of things, it's right. 
That's the paradox of truth. <laughs> you follow me on that? Mm -hmm. Like, ultimately, yeah, any direction you go in can be used for the purposes of your awakening in love, which is the only reason we're really here anyway, is for awakening in love. I don't know how to break it to you, but you're not really here so that you can be the president of your own company. <laughs> you're not really here so that you can have a trillion dollars in the bank, and you're not really here so that you can have a house in Hound's Ranch. You're not really here so that you can have a car. You're not really here. That's not, you can have that. That's not why you're here, though. You're here to extend love. You're here to extend freedom, creativity. <sighs> you know what's so easy about our job? You just have to get out the way and let love extend itself, let God mm -hmm. extend it. You don't even have to make the love that you're trying to give. The funniest statement I ever hear people say is, let's make love. Uh -huh. Love is not a pie. <laughs> the chorus says, you create love, you extend love, you allow love, you get out of the way for love, you let love, you make fear. It would be much more accurate to say, hey, babe, let's make some fear tonight. <laughs> because think about where most of your fear relationship is located is usually around sexuality. Mm. Think about it. <clears throat> you know, it's like, I, I've often said that sex is the crazy switch. <laughs> I can't tell you how many people I've been with that were totally sane until sex happened. <laughs> Anybody can got to get an amen. Amen. <laughs> And you have too. <laughs> You've been saying until sex happening, and you lost your mind. You like be going, why am I behind the bush across from this window? <laughs> I will bet you anything you wasn't in the bushes before sex. <laughs> you might have been in the bushes, bushes during sex, but you wasn't in the bushes before sex. <laughs> Now, for some people, by me mentioning sex and spirituality, in the same hour, I crossed the line. That's right. And that's because of their judgment. That's what I said earlier. Judgment. Judgment is what separates us every time. It's, it's me judging you. Here's the problem with judgment. You will be the only one that will be held accountable for your judgment. And not in the sense of being punished, but as soon as you do what you judge someone else for doing, you're going to kick your butt for doing it. You're going to put yourself down. You're going to punish yourself. You condemn a smoker, then if you ever put cigarettes to your lip, you get an audit cancer. Because you've already judged it, and so when you do it, you're going to hold your judgment against yourself more than anybody. Because you judged it. Yeah. So, so the court says, okay, let me give you a judgment that you will never lose. And I'm going to say these things over and over again. I'm gonna, let me give you the judgment that when you judge this way, you will never, ever, ever lose. It says, it says judge everything is love or call for love. Mm -hmm. Judge everything is God or call for God. Judge everything is healing or call for healing. And your judgments will never hurt you. They'll get you closer to the goal of peace. I don't know about you. I would love to get up in the morning and not worry about how I'm going to be provided for. I don't know if any of you had the experience as a child where it looked like those things were provided for you. And so you go out and play all day, a rough day of play. And you come home all dirty and stinky. And all you've been doing is playing your guts out all day long. Because you thought your parent or your guardian was going to provide the things you needed in order to <laughs> be sustained, right? Yeah. Then you fall for the, the adult disease. And the court says the adult disease is the belief that it's all about being autonomous and self-sufficient. That's the adult disease. I must do it on my own, by myself, without any help from anyone else to be a mature adult. I don't need anyone else. I do it all by myself. I don't need anyone else. I do it all by myself. I don't need anyone else. I do it all by myself. And now I'm an adult. Here's another definition of adult. An adult is someone who, when they were born, they were given endless descriptions of everything. And these descriptions were wrong and incorrect and based on separation. So from the time you're born, everybody's telling you what everything is. 
right? right? And when you get to the point that you can make all of the erroneous interpretations without any help from anybody else, <laughs> you are now an adult. No. No. <laughs> And a member of society. Because now you can come up with, you can use all the, like, and here's, and there's only one rule that the world is teaching. The Course said, see, the people said the Course of Miracles is difficult because it's so simple that you have to just decide you're not going to do it, but you can't say you don't understand. People like complicated truths because that can be an excuse for delaying the actual uh, implementation of it. Yeah. So the more simple something is, the more you don't have the excuse of saying you don't understand. You have just admit, I'm not ready to love you yet. I'm not ready to assume responsibility for my experience yet. So, because I could. So now I got to make it, I got to have 10 million more lifetimes before I can do it. <laughs> I got to get in touch with all my chakras and make them all book in the same direction. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It's like when you're not ready to do something, you make it complicated. When you're ready to do something for real in your heart, if you wholly desire something, you create it. That's what creators do. You have to completely desire something, and you will create it. So when you don't completely desire something, you create obstacles subconsciously. I hear that said again. When you're afraid of what you say you want, you create paradoxes contradictions and complication. Okay. So if you are afraid of what you're asking for, you're going to see a lot of complication and you're going to see a lot of paradoxes and you're going to see a lot of obstacles. Mm -hmm. Read with me. The obstacles are there because you are no longer certain that you want the goal. The obstacles are there because you are no longer absolutely certain you want to achieve the goal. Whatever you're having an obstacle about right now, whatever it be, because you can apply the truth to anything, so let's make this practical. Whatever it is in your life right now that you're giving yourself any form of lack of peace about, any form of lack of peace about, tell yourself that instead of trying to figure out how to get rid of the obstacles, devote more energy to your desire and intent to have the goal. The obstacle is coming because I don't wholly desire the goal and I'm afraid of the goal. If there are obstacles, I need to get away from trying to figure out how I'm going to get away from the obstacle and ask myself, what do I really want this for? What do I really want this for? What is it for? What do I want it for? What's its purpose? What is it for? What's its purpose? What is it for? Let's say, let's talk about, let's just take it to a practical, impractical, worldly level. Let's just say the thing that, some, that most people think their happiness rests in. Having money. I know spiritual students don't believe that. Because we're beyond it. That's why we don't have none. Sometimes <laughs> 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 the brokest people you ever want to meet are people who say they're on a spiritual path. Because <laughs> somehow or another, in their mind, because of their programming, they're equating poverty with spirituality. Because they heard something about Jesus coming in on a on a donkey and you know, so they don't look out for a goat, you know, but if all you have to do is open your eyes and you see that everything about the laws are about abundance. One ear of corn, I have about foot, a thousand or five hundred kernels of corn on the one ear, with each kernel of corn capable of producing what? A corn plant. So notice that every, you know, one peach tree has, what, hundreds of peaches with seeds in it that can produce another, what, peach tree. Not just another peach, but the whole tree that produces the peaches. Okay? So what I'm saying, there's nothing, if you open your eyes, about this universe that witnesses to the idea that there should be anything but an abundance. So however you got lack connected up with spirituality is just a fear. It's your fear of wealth, your fear of money, your fear of abundance. It's why you don't have any. It's not the economy. It's not Obama. It don't make no. I've been living for quite a while now, and I don't care who's president. It don't seem to make no big difference. <laughs> I can't really see no. I can't see like a president got elected and it went from you know green to yellow. You know, it, it, in the end, no matter what's going on out there, your life is going to be a reflection of your consciousness and what you are thinking and what you are believing and the, and the power you're in touch with. It has nothing to do with nothing that's going on out there. There are some people that's getting filthy rich 
during what we call challenging economic times. Mm -hmm. So if you just had to be broke when the economy was like this, no one would have money if it was a law. That's deep in it. Mm -hmm. So if you want to let go of blocks to your abundance, admit first that you're afraid of it instead of blaming anybody. But why would you be afraid of abundance? Because there, at some level, there's some part of you that thinks that you're going to lose if you have it. There's something about it that's going to take you away from some goal. And, and when I say it to you, it sounds insane, which always brings that question of, well, why would I do that to myself? Good, because that's the question that needs to be asked. Mm -hmm. Why would I do that to myself? Because it's, it's answering that question that will take you to abundance. Why am I doing it to myself? I give you a host of reasons why I used to do it to myself. I did it to myself because I didn't love myself enough to think I deserved to, deserved to have it. I did it to myself because I was afraid of what I might do if I have a lot of abundance. When I thought about the things I used to do to myself and not have a lot of abundance, I was scared to think of what I could do if I could bankroll my imagination. <laughs> I thought I didn't deserve abundance because I felt guilty about something. Mm -hmm. I thought I didn't deserve abundance because I wasn't enough. I thought I didn't deserve abundance because the last time I had abundance, I still felt like, like I sabotaged and messed it up, and so I felt like it would be best for me not to have it. I actually thought, was afraid of abundance because I thought lack was safer. Those are just a few of my own personal reasons. But when you ask that question, just like I asked that question, then I started to see how insane the answers were, which helped me let go of my belief of the fear of abundance. But see, the error that, according to the course that most people make, is that they never want to tell the truth about their egos. They never want to really tell the truth about their fear, their anger, their depression, their attack thoughts. They think that to be spiritual means that you always pretend you love everybody, even when you don't. Being spiritual means you can always say you're doing fine, you're going to always say everything is great, you can always even say you believe in a higher power, even though the way you live your life reflects it every day that you don't, because if you truly believed in a higher power and you knew you were connected with it and you knew it was going to only want your greater good, you would not be afraid of anything. And you would be doing what you want to do all day long because you would know you were being taken care of because you were going to fulfill your function to be an example of love. So to say I believe in God and I'm scared of my bills going to be paid is an obvious contradiction. But that's, but that's what the course would call an obvious truth. And it says people who are in fear never see the obvious. People who are in fear refuse to see the obvious about anything. So it's obvious you can't say I feel connected with source and I wonder when I'm going to meet somebody. <laughs> well, the truth is, if you were in connection with source, you could simply say, what would it take for the right relationship for me to show up in my life right now in ways beyond my wildest imagination through my higher self, my higher power? You would, in other words, the Course says, if you believed in a higher power within yourself, you would start to ask it. I mean, it, it just would say little things like that, and I go, boy, I can't, mm, that's the truth. I never ask. I always make up my mind what I'm going to do, then I ask God. I don't know if y'all know do that. I would always decide what I wanted to do, and then after I decided what I was doing, well, Spirit, can you kind of like make this happen? <laughs> right? Anybody familiar with that? Yes. Or, or when I got into metaphysics, it was all about whatever I can think and believe, I can manifest. Whatever I can think, I can believe, I can manifest. Then it became God was like a genie. And all I had to do was like rub God's belly and then what I wanted would happen. It, it, it was like, in other words, God was just about giving me my toys. Mm -hmm. I, I'd make up my toys, whether it, was, whether it was a house or a car or fame or whatever it was, I would come up with my toy and then God's job was to give it to me. And if God didn't, then God wasn't good and wasn't there. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying this. Anybody relate, relate to what I'm saying? Some of you may be upset today because your toys haven't shown up. Because if you tell God to decide for you when you ask for something, I always, end, I always end any desire I have with decide for me, Holy Spirit, or decide for me, God, decide for me, higher power. And I, like, whatever word works for you, okay? I, it's not about not saying what you want. It's not about not asking for, for what you want. But it's also about being having enough wisdom to know you may not know what's best for you in every situation. A mature person knows that. A mature person knows that they don't always know what's best for them. An immature person doesn't know that. They think just because they want something, that means they should have it. If you're awakening, you, you'll go, you know what? 
I don't really know what's best for me, so I'm going to ask that which loved me and that which created me to decide for me. Everybody with me on that? Yeah. Didn't say I didn't, there's nothing wrong with asking, but you want to be smart enough to say, higher court overrule me if this really is not going to be for my own best interest, even though I'm asking for this. Mm -hmm. That's what, that's what you do when you start to wake up. You go, I think I really want her. <laughs> I think I really would like to have a relationship with him. But you know, I don't really know. I thought I really, the best ones with everybody before them. <laughs> and I'm being stalled. <laughs> so, <laughs> I might want to this time ask spirit. Now, what you're hearing right now from me, the Course of Miracles says, is the absolute hardest thing for a mind that thinks it's separate to hear. And I want to acknowledge you for that. I'll say it again. Everything I've been saying this hour, the Course in Miracles says, this is the hardest thing for the human mind that thinks it's on its own to hear. Any class that's directed toward two things, saying that you may not always know what's best for you, and also saying that there's something greater than you that you can touch, tap into to get guidance and to be taken care of by. So I want to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. I don't want to take care of myself anymore. The Course in Miracles <laughs> showed me how to be taken care of while fulfilling my function in the universe, which is doing the thing that I really love. That's why I've been doing it for 30 years, for one simple reason, because it works, and it's still working. The challenge with it is that it's easier than most things that people are told to do, so it's very difficult to get anybody to pretty much do what the Course in Miracles says, because it's easier than their own plan. <laughs> And everything that comes from God is always easier than your plan. Why? Because any plan that we make up, the Course says, it's always a plan that's saying something outside of myself has to change in order for me to be happy. I gotta make somebody different in order for me to be happy. I gotta make the circumstance different for me to be happy. Our plan always involves controlling somebody or something outside of ourselves. That's always harder than asking. Why? Yeah, the, the, the course says you just could ask <laughs> for what you want. <laughs> ask who? <laughs> That's when you get in touch with the fact that you haven't made the contact with source yet. You follow me? Mm -hmm. So living in the question is the way that you create the reality that you want to have. Okay. Learning how to ask is the solution to having the happiness that you want to have. Putting everything in the form of a question is the way that you make contact with your higher self. In order to make God a reality in your life, whatever that force is, the Course says you have to start acting as if it actually exists. And the way you act as if it actually exists is to start asking. Okay? Four questions. Four questions, ask four questions, ask four questions. Ask, how many questions? Four. four questions. Here are the four questions. What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? Sit down somewhere, and you, and you can take the situation that you're in right now that you're giving yourself any kind of conflict about, and you could go, and whatever word for the higher power you want to use. People get caught up on words. Use whatever word you want to use. I personally like the word God, and I'll tell you why. And I didn't at first, but I'll tell you why I do now. Because that word is already associated with infinite power. So as soon as I say it, I'm tapping into all the minds all around the world who already believe that idea represents infinite power. And look at the power behind my thought then. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's the same way. Working with the way your mind is already programmed. That's good. It's, it's ridiculous to, it's, it's okay, you know, as part of my individuality for so many years, I was about being as counterculture as possible and doing everything as opposite as what I was taught I could possibly come up with. And I'm still that way, but now I'm smart enough to work with the way my mind already works because the Course taught me how to do that. So I can, I can fight the word God, which I'm going to hear on TV, radio, everybody that I know. So trying to get away from that word is really kind of stupid because I'm not going to get away from that word. All right, but what I could do is give myself a new interpretation of what that word means so that every time I hear the word, it means something that, that frees me instead of something that limits me. And so I'm not fighting with the word. Now the word is working to my advantage because it already has a lot of power behind it. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. So why not work with the system in a way that frees you from the system rather than trying to spend all your time fighting the system and losing? 
Because as soon as you fight it, you've forgotten you creating it. Mm -hmm. Fighting it is a surefire sign you no longer know you're responsible for what you're experiencing. That's deep. That is deep. Yeah, what were you getting ready to ask, Chris? Yeah, I wanted to ask you um, when you were talking about being wrong. Because, mm -hmm. okay, like yesterday I had a hard day and I was uh, in, a, in a tough spot. Mm -hmm. So I found myself asking, uh, praying to God two things. I don't know what this is for and I don't know what any of this means. Please decide for God for me. So then, what you were saying, the happy, is that me moving towards being happiness? Because basically, oh, absolutely, I, I, I absolutely, because because everything is an idea. Every single thing that we are experiencing is the result of an idea. Idea. Everything. Can anyone name anything in this room that's not the result of an idea? Nothing. Right. So, are you the result of an idea? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there had to be an idea of you before there was you, and it's the idea of you that you're experiencing every day. It's deep when you think about it. Your life is your idea of you. Wow. Mm. Then you look at your life and you get out of denial immediately. <laughs> right. It's your idea of you, but it isn't necessarily the truth about you. So when you say, what do I do? Just ask me, Holy Spirit. When you ask Spirit to come into your life, you are strengthening and sharing the idea of God, the idea of love in your life. And ideas become stronger the more you share them. And what's really cool about an idea is the more you share it, the stronger it be and bigger it becomes, but you never lose it. The, an idea is the one thing you can share with somebody that you keep. I can share the idea, Chris, that you're an unlimited being. You can say, wow, Earl, I accepted that. And then now you have the idea that you're an unlimited being, right? Yeah. I still have the idea of you as an unlimited being, though. So I shared it, but I still have it. And now both of us have that idea. So has that idea of Chris being an unlimited being just become stronger? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So why is it that we see more fear in the world than love? Well, what are we sharing with each other more? Fear or love? We're sharing more fear of each other than love of each other generally. And then we're wondering why it looks like it's more fear than love in the world. So how do I change that? I change that by extending the idea of love even when I don't see any. Because in the beginning, I've got to plant the new idea right in the middle of an environment that's based on my old idea, which was based on fear. So at the very beginning, I've got to be willing to be extending the love even though it might not look like there's any around me anywhere. Because if it's going to be planted, it's got to start with me. So I have to start sharing the idea if I want to experience it, even if it doesn't look like it's anywhere around me. What I used to do was just the opposite. I would wait, waiting for somebody else to give me the love, and then when somebody else gave me the love, then I'd say, I'm going to give it back to you. So I was sitting back waiting for the love. And that's what I see many brothers and sisters doing. They're all sitting back waiting for somebody to give them the love, waiting for somebody to say hello, waiting for somebody to say, let's go out for a cup of coffee, waiting for somebody, waiting, 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 waiting. It's going to come from you. So if it's ever going to happen in your life, you do it now. Let's do it the easy way. Start out with the people you already like. <laughs> Please do not try to practice the truth on the people you can't stand first. I repeat. Please do not try to practice it unless you are one of these people that that's the challenge you want to give to yourself. That's fine. Don't get me wrong. I'm just sharing some stuff with you. It'll be. It's always easier for me to love where I feel love feel so much love that it overflows into the areas that I think I don't feel it. I'm so full of love, my cousin that usually upsets me can't bother me. Why? I'm just feeling too good to be bothered by his stuff today. Some of y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. I, I'm too, my life is too cool to care if anybody believes me like it used to. Like, like sometimes I have such passion when I teach that people think that it really, 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 really going to shit me if you don't get this. It's like, no. No, if you accept something for yourself, you don't really care whether anybody else gets it or not because you're no longer trying to prove anything to yourself anymore. So that's why you're not trying to convince somebody else. Because when you're trying to convince somebody else, you're really just trying to convince yourself. So the once you begin to accept the truth, you're not trying to convince anybody else. You're just applying it to yourself and getting the cool results. And then going, hmm, okay, if you're willing to listen to maybe another way of looking at it, I'd be glad to share it with you. But if you don't, that's okay. That's the way you look at it as you begin to accept ideas. But when you, like when you haven't accepted an idea yet, you're always trying to convince everybody else around you about the validity of your point because you don't believe it yourself. So all your friends who are trying to convince you are the ones who don't believe what they're trying to convince you about. That's good. 
they're trying to convince themselves, and they're using you to do it. Mm -hmm. Your opposition to their convincing is their opposition themselves to what they are trying to believe, because they don't believe it yet either. So let's say a person went into some uh, teaching that said there was innocence and no sin. All right? Then they would be trying to convince themselves that they were innocent, and they would bring up every thought within them that they're sinful and guilty would come up to be released. They'll see their own belief in their own sin. As soon as they go, I'm innocent, then they'll start seeing their own guilty thoughts. And those guilty thoughts are going to be reflected back to them through the people around them because they're their own beliefs. You're surrounded by your own subconscious beliefs. You're surrounded by your own unconscious beliefs. You're surrounded by your own unconscious beliefs. Do you want to know what's going on in your subconscious mind? Look Would you like world. to know what's going on in your unconscious mind? Look at your Open world. your eyes. Look at your world. Look at your friends. Look at your lovers. Look at your boss. Look at everything in your life. That's your subconscious mind. That's your unconscious mind. That's what you really believe as opposed to what you're telling yourself you believe. How do I know I'm changing my mind? Because the people in my world are perceived as loving. 99% of the people in my world I don't have any conflict with right now. 99% of the people in my world are loving right now. A bunch of them in here. So how do I know I'm getting it? Because I see it in my world on a regular basis, on a consistent basis. Does that mean I don't still have some, st some stuff that needs to be changed? No. If I see it anywhere, it's in my mind. mind. That's yeah. my model. If I see, see it, it anywhere, anywhere, it's in, in my, my own mind. mind. Even the good stuff. Even the good stuff. <laughs> Even the good stuff. I see murder anywhere, there's a murder in my mind. I see abundance anywhere, there's abundance in my mind. I see kindness anywhere, there's kindness in my mind. <coughs> now, will I act from the murder in my mind? No, I won't act from the murder in my mind. But I will certainly admit I have murderous thoughts. I can't tell you how many mosquitoes have bit the dust because of me. <laughs> That was a life. <laughs> so, you're innocent, you're loving, you deserve to be loved, it's okay to be wrong if you're miserable. You're not a victim, you're loved completely. Your uniqueness is your gift to everyone. You have a special function. When you start to ask what that function is, then you will watch the things in your life that are freaking you out begin to correct and heal themselves in your perception. Whoa. Thank you for listening to this message. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to believe it. 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 But tell me something, you all. The truth is the one thing that will always be true whether you believe it or not. The lab. That's a southern lab. Go back out of your lab. It's normal to be both like totally insane and totally sane. I think like every I, single day, both like at the same time. Well, it's it's, it's actually layers. never at the same time, but we definitely go from a course perspective. But we go, we shift back and forth between love and fear, love and fear, love and fear, love and fear, sane and insane. And that's why everything changes so much because we're going back and forth between love and fear. But what we need to do is let go of condemning ourselves for that and just understand that that fear that we're feeling or that conflict is a request for love. It is a prayer to God. It is a prayer for help. If you were to see all your so-called negative emotions as a prayer, imagine all the blessings you would attract to yourself. Mm. Really, if you were to go, every fearful thought I have is a request for God's guidance or love's guidance. Every fear I have is a request for the love. Every, every feeling of lack I have is an actual prayer for abundance. You'd be praying all day. You know, you wouldn't be feeling bad about any of your emotions or your feelings. So don't judge them. They're either love or a call for love. Everything is either what? Love, love or a call for love. love. So I want to take a minute to chant, yeah. I am entitled to miracles. Some of you want, might want to listen. Some of you might want to say it for yourself because you realize the power of the spoken word. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I am entitled to miracles. 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 So what you want to do, you want to get it, you want to let it get in your body. You want to let it get in your body. So I'm gonna start it off. One more time. I 
I am entitled to miracles. Breathe. I am entitled to miracles. 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 What about we? I go, we are entitled to miracles. We are entitled to miracles. Yeah, what? We are entitled to miracles. We are entitled to miracles. What about the friends and relatives? They are entitled to miracles. Say what? They are entitled to miracles. The people that you love, they are entitled to miracles. The people you can stay in, they are entitled to miracles. What about you? You are entitled to miracles. Tell somebody. You are entitled to miracles. You are entitled to miracles. Now give them a smile. You are entitled to miracles. One more time. You are entitled to miracles. Let's give it up, Holy Spirit. And may the course be with you. Close our bell.